Hey guys, welcome to another Thursday edition of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick. Today I'm going to kind of give an update on what's going on with the Spencer Eldon lawsuit against Nirvana for the cover of Nirvana's 1991 smash hit, Nevermind. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on that link down below. Go check out the Vinyl Den Facebook group. It's just a cool place to continue the music conversation. I'm sure you guys are kind of hear, tired of hearing me talk about it every week, but uh, check that out. There's also a couple other links down there. There's one for the Vinyl Den merch page. We've got uh, t-shirts and sweatshirts. There's a link for the Vinyl Den Patreon page if you want a sports show, so it's greatly appreciated. There's also a link down there for the new Vinyl Den Spotify playlist where we're kind of updating it with music that we're talking about uh, every week on the show here. And then uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give it the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time we release new episodes. So if you guys don't know who Spencer Eldon is, he is the baby on the cover of Nirvana's uh, 1991 album, Nevermind. And in August of last year, he filed a lawsuit saying that uh, the band violated federal child pornography laws with the album cover and that his, that his family never gave consent to the photo. So it was, uh, it's actually taken a couple of interesting turns since then. Um, he did add in the fact that, uh, the photo used because of the dollar bill involved in it, it was, it's a form of, uh, sex trafficking, which, um, case law or in the United States is pretty clear in the fact that, um, you know, for it to be child pornography, it has to be something sexually, uh, exploitive in the, in the, in the picture. So just a naked baby in a pool shouldn't necessarily rise to a level of, of child pornography and, uh, child pornography in the federal statute. There's only a, a 10 year window to, to file a lawsuit. So it's, it's not really 10 years from 1991. It's, it would be 10 years from the time that the individual knew about it happening. So now that he is 30 years old, you know, there's a, a been, I think plenty enough time, especially since, uh, you know, he, he's done several, um, photo shoots over the last, you know, decade and a half, uh, you know, recreating the, the photo. And I will say that in, in every episode, in every interview that he's done when he has recreated that, uh, nevermind photo that, uh, he has talked about how his family has, wasn't, um, you know, properly paid for for the for the photo. Because I will say that when his parents, um, you know, when the photo was taken, the family was paid two hundred dollars for the uh, for the for the photo. And I think that's where kind of where the rub comes from, is because now that he's thirty years old, you know, the, this album has sold over thirty million copies, and I think he feels that his family was never really properly paid for. But I think his lawsuit kind of came off the rails when he started. Uh, involving everyone that's ever been part of Nirvana in the in the lawsuit. I know Nirvana's original drummer, which I don't even think I think he was on one song on Nevermind, was included in the lawsuit, which he didn't have anything to do with the album cover. Um, you know, there was several other people that were included in this lawsuit that frankly had nothing to do with the album cover. Um, you know, I, I think that going over the original suit or the, some of the arguments he had in the original art, in the original um, case when it was filed, I think he had some valid arguments. I think there's some valid case, um, uh, contract, uh, disputes there that, uh, that I'm not saying that he would win or that's, you know, that should win. I think that there's some valid arguments that he can make there. I think where he kind of, like I said, kind of went off the rails is when he started going off with this, uh, you know, pornography angle or the, sex trafficking angle on it and kind of throwing everyone under the uh, Nirvana umbrella into this lawsuit. So I think it was early December, Nirvana's attorneys filed a, a motion to dismiss on the case and uh, Spencer Eldon was given a December 30th deadline to file an appeal or fi to file a response um, to the motion. And Spencer missed the December 30th deadline. So on January 3rd of this year, the case was dismissed. And Spencer had until January 13th to refile the case. So when Spencer Eldon refiled it on the 12th, uh, he took out the, the child sex trafficking uh, angle out of which I, I thought that was kind of a, an odd angle to take in the original complaint anyway. So I'm glad to see he took that out. But um, I, I still don't really see this case really going anywhere because I think he's still going to have a hard time making the child pornography argument. 
So I will say that I, I know it can be difficult to kind of take out the court of public opinion kind of aspect out of it and the outrage over the, the you know, a lawsuit for something that happened 30 years prior and, um, you know, all the other, um, you know, he, things he's done over the years. I know he's got a, Spencer Eldon has a Nevermind tattoo and all sorts of other stuff. I think you have to take that out of the equation for the, for the, when you're looking at this case, um, you know, like I said, I, I think he does, he, he has the ability to make some very valid arguments as far as the, the family never being properly, uh, paid for, for the photo, you know, a $200, you know, uh, photo shoot for something that went on to sell 30 million copies. Um, I think he could build kind of an argument there, but I think going about it with the whole child pornography aspect, I, I, I think kind of hurts him, like I said, in the public per, um, perception and really when you're in front of a judge trying to argue this case. But I think some of the other arguments that, uh, Spencer Alden has tried to make in the complaint or the original complaint. I haven't seen the refiled one. I just know they re refiled it. But um, I know in the original complaint, he tried to over sensationalize some of the stuff that Kurt Cobain wrote in his diary um, to try to make a, a case for that sex trafficking and, and child pornography case that um, I think is really unsubstantiated. unsubstantiated. Um, I, I think that um, you know his lawyers have kind of led him down this path that I think it's going to be really kind of hard to craft a, uh, a really viable lawsuit now against Nirvana over this. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this lawsuit kind of unfolds over the next, you know, s several months or, or, cause I'm assuming that it probably will get dismissed again, just because, um, I, I think the, the pornography angle he's taking in the lawsuit, uh, probably isn't the best way to go. Like I said, I think, I think he'd be better suited to go with a more of a contract dispute, whether, you know, rather than the, the child pornography angle, but I don't know, we'll, we'll see how the, how the courts view this and how they respond to it. I will say that, uh, before I get a bunch of crazy comments below, I do have a law background. I, I do, I, uh, my first degree was, it, it was as a paralegal. I worked as a paralegal for several years, but, um, you know, so I'm not completely going into this stuff blind. I do have, do know some stuff when it comes to law, but, uh, I don't know. You can guys can drop me a comment down below. We can have a conversation about this lawsuit. I just think it's, uh, he does have some valid arguments, some valid arguments, but, uh, I think, uh, he's definitely going into this lawsuit, uh, you know, with, with way too broad of a look. I, I think if he's much more narrow on that, uh, contract, argument I, I think you might actually have somewhat of a valid uh, a valid case well that's all you got for today guys i just wanted to kind of give a quick update on what's going on with spencer alden's lawsuit it's something i've been wanting to talk about for a while i was kind of letting the dust kind of settle on a little bit because i know there was uh some pretty heated arguments last summer when this lawsuit first came up we were even talking about it on the the vinyl dead facebook group but uh i don't know drop me a comment down below and let me know what you guys think i i, I have a hard time seeing this pornography angle really working very long. I, I would assume that's probably either going to get dismissed or the cases will get thrown out or something along those lines. But uh, like I said, I think if he goes back with more of a, a targeted contract dispute angle, I, I think it might be better. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not really familiar with contract law in California though. So I don't know. Like I said, drop me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the old thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below. That's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace.